This program is made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. My name is Rick Renner, and today I'm in my seat in the Moscow Good News Church. This is where I sit every week. And the reason that Denise and I and our family and our ministry is in the heart of Moscow, Russia, is because we were guided here in 1991. Jesus promised in John chapter 16, verse 13, Howbeit, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you. Jesus said the Holy Spirit would guide us. And the word guide in Greek is the word hodegas. It is the word for a tour guide or one who leads you on an excursion. He knows all the routes. He knows all the sites, what's interesting, what's not interesting, what routes you should avoid. And if you trust your tour guide, you can have quite an adventure. Well, let me tell you, for 30 years, we've been following the guiding work of the Holy Spirit, and He has led us on quite an excursion. And He's waiting to lead you on an adventure too, but you have to trust Him and follow His guiding in your life. You say, how do I do that? That is what I'm going to talk to you about today. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Welcome to today's program. My name is Rick Redder, and I've been waiting for you. Thank you for letting me come right into your space. Today, I want to talk to you about the supernatural guiding of the Holy Spirit in our lives. My entire ministry is a result of me following the leader. I have followed the guidance of the Holy Spirit, and my friends, He knows everything out in front of you. He knows what you should do. The Holy Spirit knows what you should not do, where you should go, where you should not go. And if you'll follow Him as your leader, He'll guide you exactly as you need to be led. And that is what I'm going to be talking to you about today. But I want you to have my entire series, which is called The Holy Spirit and You. This 10-part series is designed to walk you from where you are into the spiritual life you want to have. There really is a deeper dimension waiting for you. You say, well, how do I get there? Get this series and we'll walk there together. You'll discover the deeper dimension that is waiting for you where you can become the dynamic duo, the Holy Spirit and you working together. And this series comes with a study guide that is just loaded with all the points, the principles, the Greek words, everything in these programs is also in the study guide. And when you hear it, or you see it and you read it all at the same time, it really reinforces what you're hearing. So please order these today by going online or by giving us a call. And we're also offering you my book by the same title, The Holy Spirit and You, Working Together as Heaven's Dynamic Duel. And on the back of the book, I write, this book is not meant to be a deep scholarly work, but rather it's designed to lead spiritually hungry people like you into a new place in God, a secret place that God's been waiting for you to find for a long, long time, the Holy Spirit and you working together as heaven's dynamic duo. And hey, friend, if you have a prayer need, please call us or send us an email. The moment your email shows up in our inbox or the phone rings, we're going to begin to really put our faith together with you for God to move mightily in your life. That's what we are promised in Jeremiah 33, 3. Call unto me, God says, and I'll show you great and mighty things. If you'll let us know how to pray, we will call out in faith and God will do great and mighty things in your life. He promises that. And if you're not a partner, please pray about becoming a partner with our ministry. A partner is someone who financially regularly gives into our ministry to help us take this teaching to people all over the planet. And friend, people all over the planet are tuning in because they're looking for teaching they can trust. Proverbs 10, 21 says, the lips of the righteous feed many. And I truly believe that's my job given to me by heaven to feed many people the word of God, but I can only do it with the help of my partners who financially give to the ministry so we can take this teaching around the world. And if you're already a partner, thank you. If you want to become a partner today, we welcome you into our partner family and immediately we'll send you Denise's book called The Gift of Forgiveness along with my book, 
called Life in the Combat Zone, we always send these two books to everyone who becomes a partner as a way of saying welcome to our partner family. But hey, reach for your Bible. And today we're going to look at the next work of the Holy Spirit in our lives when the Holy Spirit leads us and the Holy Spirit guides us. And we're seeing that there are 10 essential works that the Holy Spirit wants to do in your life. He wants to be the teacher. You need to see yourself as the apprentice, submitting to the Holy Spirit, explicitly obeying whatever He says to do, and you will experience His powerful presence in your life. But you have to obey Him and cooperate with Him. And we're seeing that there are 10 works the Holy Spirit wants to do in our life. Number one, we saw in John 14, 16, the Holy Spirit has come to comfort us. Number two, we saw in John 14, 17, the Holy Spirit is not a guest. He is a permanent indweller. He has come to indwell us. Number three, we saw in John 14, 26, the Holy Spirit has come to teach us. Number four, we saw in John 14, 26, the Holy Spirit comes to remind us of everything Jesus did and everything Jesus said. Number five, we saw the Holy Spirit comes to testify to us and through us. That's recorded in John chapter 15, verse 26. Number six, we saw in John 16, 9, the Holy Spirit comes to convict the lost man of his sin. And number seven, we saw in John 16, verse 10, the Holy Spirit likewise comes to convict the saved person that he is righteous. And today we're going to see number eight, in John 16, verse 13, the Holy Spirit comes to guide us. That is what Jesus said in John chapter 16, verse 13. Listen to these amazing words. Howbeit, when he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all the truth. That is a proclamation from the lips of Jesus about what the Holy Spirit will do with you if you'll become his apprentice and if you'll obey him, Jesus said, he will guide you. Now, it's amazing to me that when you come to John 14, 15, and 16, Jesus is speaking the last words that he will ever speak to his disciples because Jesus is about to go to the cross. And in this last meeting with his disciples, he could have talked about prophecy. He could have talked about theology. He could have talked about the church. All of that would have been fine. But Jesus knew he was going to be leaving them. And just like he had been a leader to them and a teacher to them and a partner to them, now they would need to know how to partner with the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit would become their teacher and their guide. So for three chapters, Jesus began to speak to them about the work and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And four times he called the Holy Spirit a comforter, which really means a coach. Three times he called the Holy Spirit the Spirit of Truth by calling him the comforter and the spirit of truth. Jesus was saying, when he comes, he'll do for you everything I did for you. He'll be just like me, just like I coached you and trained you. He will also coach you and train you. And just like you could trust me, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. Jesus said that three times. He'll never mislead you. He'll never misguide you. You can rely on anything he says. He is the spirit of truth. And now Jesus says in John 16, verse 13, how be it when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all the truth. What does that word guide mean? The word guide in Greek is the word odegas. And wow, this is so powerful because the word hodas is the word for a road. But when it becomes hodegas, it's no longer a road but it's one who knows all the roads or one who knows all the routes. It is actually the Greek word for a tour guide, a tour guide or a guide who shows a traveler the safest course through an unknown territory, a guide who knows the safest, fastest, and most pleasurable route to take, a tour guide, and it was exactly the same word which described a guide for the blind. And of course, if you're blind, you have to trust your guide to lead you correctly. And now Jesus is saying, when the Holy Spirit comes, he's going to be hodegas. He's going to be for you a guide. You may not see where to go. Let the Holy Spirit be your eyes. 
But for the Holy Spirit to be your eyes, you have to trust him. And that's why Jesus said over and over, he's the spirit of truth, the spirit of truth, the spirit of truth. He'll never mislead you. He'll never misguide you. You can trust him. He is the spirit of truth. And if you do not have the eyes to see where you're going, then put your hand in his and he will guide you. But there's something else. It's also the word for a tour guide. Well, a tour guide knows all the sights. A good tour guide knows all the best routes. A good tour guide knows what is pleasurable and enjoyable. A good tire, a tour guide knows all the sights you should avoid. A tour guide knows everything that you do not know. And if you have a good tour guide, a good tour guide will lead you on quite an adventure, a real excursion. And that is the word that Jesus uses to describe the Holy Spirit's ministry to you, which means if you'll trust him and if you'll allow him to lead you, the Holy Spirit will give you the thrill of a lifetime. He'll lead you on an excursion. And my friend, you don't know what's in the future, but the Holy Spirit does. He has eyes to see what is in front of you. He sees the will of God. He sees the attacks of the enemy. He knows the way you should go. He knows the routes that you should avoid. The Holy Spirit knows how to give you the safest and the most pleasurable experience. And if you'll listen to him, and explicitly follow him like an apprentice, he will lead you and give you the experience of a lifetime. That is precisely what Jesus was saying in this verse. How be it when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all the truth and he'll guide you in all the affairs of life. And this makes me, in my mind, go back to Romans chapter eight, verse 14, a verse that I love which I covered a few programs before, but let's cover it again. And in Romans 8, verse 14, it says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. We're talking about being guided. We're talking about being led by the Holy Spirit. Well, that word led in Greek is the word ago, which means to lead. But please listen to this. It depicted animals led by a rope tied around their necks who followed wherever their owners led them. Hmm. The owner would tug and pull and the animal followed. To be led by a gentle pull, to be led by a gentle tug, which means very often the leadership of the Holy Spirit is very gentle. He tugs, he pulls. You've got to learn to be sensitive to recognize when the Holy Spirit's tugging and pulling on your heart to go a certain direction. However, this word led, the Greek word ago, forms a unity with the word agon and the word agon describes an intense conflict such as a struggle in a wrestling match or a struggle of the human will. And very often when the Holy Spirit tugs on our heart, our mind goes tilt. A wrestling begins to take place between our mind and our spirit. We can feel the Holy Spirit tugging on our heart, but our mind says, I don't understand. Why would God tell me to do this? And yet the Holy Spirit's tugging on the heart saying, do this, do this, do this. The mind says, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. And a struggle begins between the mind and the spirit. And we have to learn to be led, to trust the Holy Spirit that if he's tugging on our heart, if he's pulling on us to do something, we need to follow that gentle leading because the Holy Spirit is trying to either help us get where we need to be or to avoid something negative that has been planned for us. And I want to give you a personal story as an illustration. Many years ago, Denise and I were in Chicago where we were ministering. And one day before the evening service, Denise and I laid down to take a nap to get ready, get some rest before we went to the evening service. And as I laid there, I began to be deeply disturbed in my heart. And I felt like I wasn't supposed to leave the room that night. But my mind said, why would the Holy Spirit want you to stay in the room when you could go to the meeting and receive wonderful ministry? But yet in my heart, I knew I am not supposed to leave this room. And I even said to Denise, I don't know why, but I feel the Holy Spirit tugging on my heart urging me, do not leave this room tonight. But I said, I don't know why the Holy Spirit would tell me to do that. And this war began between my heart and my head. So finally, I convinced myself that this was nonsense. Why would the Holy Spirit want me just to sit in an empty room while everybody else goes to church and has a good time? This must be my imagination. So I overrode this tugging and the pulling of the Spirit in my heart. Denise and I got in the car. 
We rode across town all the way to the church and the whole way to the church, I was grieved on the inside. I kept saying to Denise, I don't know why, but I feel like this car needs to turn around and take me back to the hotel room. For some reason, I'm supposed to be in that room tonight. And then I'd say, ah, this doesn't make any sense. Why would God want me to sit in a room by myself when I could be in a great meeting receiving wonderful ministry? So I said to the driver, just keep going. We went all the way to the church where we saw our friends, we hugged each other and shook hands. And when they all turned to walk into the auditorium for the meeting, I was so inwardly grieved that I said, Denise, for some reason, I am supposed to be in the hotel room. I cannot go into this service. The Holy Spirit is telling me, go back to the room, get into the room as fast as you can. So not understanding why, I said to the driver, would you please take me back to my hotel room? En route to the hotel, I realized I was going to miss dinner, so I said to the driver, pull into this fast food restaurant. I want to get me something to eat. Then I walked over to a convenience store and bought some toothpaste and took my time and slowly made my way back to the car. Time was passing, and finally we got back to the hotel. When I walked into the reception, the receptionist said, why are you back from the meeting so early? Well, what was I going to say? I don't know why. I just felt inwardly led that I'm supposed to be in the room tonight. So rather than explain, I just visited a little while with the receptionist and finally walked over to the elevator, pushed the button, rode up to our floor, walked down the room, the hallway to our room, put the key in the door, walked in the room. And when I walked into our hotel room, it was devastated. It looked like a whirlwind had come through our room. Our suitcases were opened, clothes were thrown all over the room. And I noticed that Denise's jewelry box was on the floor. It was empty. There was some cheap costume jewelry scattered around the floor. And I looked over to the desk where my computer and my briefcase had been. I noticed my computer was missing. My briefcase was gone. And in my briefcase was my passport and all my legal documents. And as I stood there and looked around the room, I realized we had been robbed. Somebody had come into our room when we were not there. They had gone through all of our luggage. They had ransacked the room. They stole Denise's jewelry, some of it brand new and so beautiful. They took my computer, and in that computer were five books that I was writing for which I had no copy. They took my briefcase. Everything was gone. And there I stood in the middle of all of our belongings, just ransacked, hurled around the room, And I was in a state of shock. You know, it's really terrible when you realize you've been robbed. You feel so violated. And it took me a few seconds before it really dawned on me. You have been robbed. Somebody's been in your room. And when it finally dawned on me, we had been robbed. Standing there in the middle of all of our belongings, which were now thrown all around the room, I heard the Holy Spirit say, Now you know why I was leading you to stay in the room. (laughs) If I had obeyed my heart and this leading of the Holy Spirit, the thief would have never gotten into the room. That event would have never taken place. But you see, the Holy Spirit is like a tour guide. He knows what's out front. He knows what's in front of you. He knows where you should go. He knows where you should not go. He knows where you should be. He knows where you should not be. And if we will listen to him, he'll tug on our hearts. He'll tug on our spirits and we'll feel his leading and he will protect us. That's his job. He's like a guide for the blind. He sees what we cannot see. And when I stood there in the midst of all of that destruction and the thievery all around me, the Holy Spirit said, now you know why I told you to stay in the room tonight. He knew that was going to happen if the room was empty. But if I had obeyed and stayed, that event would have never taken place. The Holy Spirit knew. The Holy Spirit knows what's going to happen in the economy. 
The Holy Spirit knows what's going to happen in your job. The Holy Spirit knows what's going to happen in the weather. There's nothing that the Holy Spirit does not know. He knows where you should go on vacation, where you should not go on vacation. He knows where you should invest your money and where you should not invest your money. And Jesus said, he to you will be a hodegas. He knows all the roads. He knows all the routes. And if you will trust him as the spirit of truth, if you will see yourself as the apprentice of the Holy Spirit, and if you will explicitly obey his leading, he will guide you in such a way that your trip will be pleasurable. Your experience will be enjoyable. You will avoid every catastrophe that has been planned for you because the Holy Spirit knows it all. You know, there's a great example in the book of Acts when the apostle Paul wanted to go to a certain region to preach. And the Bible says the Holy Spirit forbid him to go there. The Bible doesn't tell us why. We don't know what was waiting for Paul. You know why we don't know? Because Paul obeyed the leading of the Holy Spirit and he did not go. And by following the leading of the Holy Spirit, he circumvented something that the enemy had planned for him. And Jesus said, the Holy Spirit, who is the spirit of truth, you can trust him. He will never mislead you. He will never misguide you. He is absolutely reliable. He is the spirit of truth. How be it when he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you, Hodegas, like a tour guide, like one who leads you on an excursion. He will lead you in all the right ways. He will show you what to avoid. He will give you a pleasurable experience along the way. And that's what we want. My friends, why should we try to figure out everything by ourselves when we have a guide who already knows everything? Sure, we ought to use our heads. We ought to think we ought to do the best we can. But if we feel a leading of the Holy Spirit, then as the Holy Spirit's apprentices, our job is to say, yes, sir, you're the master, you're the teacher, you're the guide. If this is what you're saying to me, I'm going to follow that tug. I'm going to follow that leading that you're putting in my heart. And the Holy Spirit will enable us to find the safest, the most pleasurable route, the fastest route, and avoid things that the enemy has planned against us. Oh, to have a guide like this. And we have such a guide. His name is the Holy Spirit. And when we partner with him, we become a dynamic duo. It's the Holy Spirit and us working together. And this is one of the 10 works that the Holy Spirit wants to do in the life of every believer. And that means me and that means you. The Holy Spirit wants to be your guide. He just needs your cooperation. He needs you to put your hand in his and trust him to lead you because he sees what you cannot see. He knows where you need to go. He knows where you should not go. He knows where you need to stay. And if you'll listen to him, the Holy Spirit will give you the experience of a lifetime because he is our tour guide. I'm out of time, but I'll be back in just a moment and I'm going to pray for you. Is your heart longing to know God more intimately? Are you inwardly crying out to know more of the power of God in your life? Then the series, The Holy Spirit in You, is exactly what you need to take you into the supernatural life God wants you to experience. In this series, Rick Renner covers how the Holy Spirit is our comforter, how the Holy Spirit speaks to each of us, how to recognize the voice of the Holy Spirit, how to partner with the Holy Spirit, how to see powerful and supernatural results in your life. This insightful 10-part series is available in digital or physical format starting at just $20. In addition, we are also offering you Rick's companion book, The Holy Spirit and You, working together as heaven's dynamic duo. In this book, Rick shows you how to have an intimate and powerful relationship with the Spirit of God. So if your heart is crying out to know the Holy Spirit in a deeper and more meaningful way, this book is exactly what you need to help get you moving into the supernatural life that God wants you to have right now. This essential book about knowing the joy and power of the Holy Spirit can be yours for just $17. 
Don't miss this special offer, the 10-part series, The Holy Spirit in You, and the companion book, The Holy Spirit in You, working together as heaven's dynamic duo. Call the number on your screen now or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. Hey friends, this is Rick and Denise. We are so glad to be here. And Denise, where are we? We are at Noah's Ark. It's right there on the hill behind us. And we're here with our entire team. It is just magnificent, but we're really here because of you. Because of your giving, we're able to come here with our whole team. And right now we're doing a series called Discovering Noah's Ark. It is a full documentary. There's a whole bunch of us here but we're able to do it because of your giving. In fact, we're able to do everything we do because of your giving. Broadcasting, TV programs, social media, writing books, teaching the Bible, establishing churches. We're able to do all of it because of the anointing of God and the grace of God. God's given us a great team and you're part of the team. Your giving really puts fuel in the tank so we can do this. And before we went up the hill any further today, we wanted to stop and say thank you because we're very aware that we're able to do all of this because of you. And today, I just wanted to express on behalf of Denise and myself and everyone else, thank you for being such an amazing and faithful partner. My friend, I am having such a good time talking to you about the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Oh, my friend, God wants you to find this deeper dimension in the Spirit of God. It will add so much flavor, so much excitement to your spiritual life, and God is just waiting for you to find it. And that's why I want you to order my brand new series, which is called The Holy Spirit and You Working Together as Heaven's Dynamic Duo. God wants you and the Holy Spirit to be the dynamic duo, you and the Holy Spirit. And this 10-part series will help you walk into that deeper place. And it comes with a study guide. And not only does it come with a study guide, but there is an accompanying book by the same title called The Holy Spirit and You Working Together as Heaven's Dynamic Duo. This book will walk you into the experience that I'm talking about. If you want to know this deeper place, if you want to have a partnership with the Holy Spirit and become the dynamic duo with the Spirit of God, order this book today, The Holy Spirit in You, because it will help you walk into that place that God has designed for you and God is waiting for you to find. Amen. And remember that if you need prayer, we are here for you at Rick Renner Ministries, and we really want to pray with you. Send us your email or give us a call as soon as your email shows up in the inbox or as soon as the phone rings, we're going to release our faith with you and God is going to move mightily in your life. That is what we are promised in Jeremiah 33 verse 3 and we will pray with you and God really will move. But let me pray for you right now. Father, I thank you for the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Thank you that we don't have to figure out everything by ourselves. And Holy Spirit, help us to trust you to be our guide. You're the spirit of truth. You'll never mislead us. You'll never misguide us. Oh, we want to follow you as our guide. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, I'll be back tomorrow. But until then, remember Ecclesiastes 8.4, where the word of a king is, there is power. Renner Ministries is proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ through every available media to the uttermost parts of the earth. Discover the many ways you can help us make a difference in lives around the world with the word of God. We invite you to partner with us in teaching, strengthening, and rescuing lives for the glory of God. Together, we can make a difference that will last throughout eternity. This program was made possible by the giving of the God-called partners of Renner Ministries.